So yes, I'm Miss Jackson. Thank you for Corinne and Gabby for being here tonight um, and sharing your Milken alumni experience of being at Oregon. Um, there might be a couple other students joining us as well, um, but I would love to kick things off with you both introducing who you are, your name, your, your, the year that you graduated from Milken. Um, if you've graduated from Oregon, letting us know that timeline as well and what you study or have studied at Oregon. And if you are an alum of Oregon, what are you doing now? Where are you in life and in the world? <laughs> and um, how did Oregon help you on that path? Um, Corinne, do you wanna go first? Sure. Um, so I'm Corinne and I uh, graduated from Milken in 2014. Geez, that sounds like such a long time ago. <laughs> So long ago, um, but I graduated Milken in 2014, and I um, went on to the University of Oregon and studied architecture over there. Um, and I did a um, five-year program over there. So at Oregon, it's a five-year undergraduate program. And so I got my Bachelor of Architecture um, from there. And um, that was something that actually really drew me to Oregon. I, I knew that when I had um, when I was in high school, when I was at Milken, um, I was taking the Sokolow's architecture classes and her drafting classes. And that's what really kind of, you know, put me on, on the path that I am now. Um, but I knew that when I was in high school and when I was looking at colleges, that there are two routes that you can go in terms of architecture programs. So you can do the five year, a five year undergraduate program where you get a Bachelor of Architecture, or you can do a four-year undergraduate program where you graduate with Bachelor of Arts, but then you have to go to get your master's for two years in order to get a Master of Architecture. So it's either four and two or five. So I knew that I wanted to do a five-year program. Um, and so then Oregon was like one of those programs that, one of those schools that had that program and that was kind of my big draw to it. Um, so I started at Oregon in September of 2014, and I loved it so much over there. It is so much fun, and um, there's just like a lot of great things to it. I mean, it's a beautiful campus. Um, it has an amazing architecture program. It was like ranked, I think, top 10. I don't know where it is right now, but it's it's ranked pretty high in terms of the architecture program, When at least when I was applying. Um, you get that big, big campus feel without it actually being too many people, which is really, really, really nice. So you don't feel like you're like completely lost in this big school, but like you can also, you know, be a part of that. Um, and yeah, I, I, I really, really liked it there. And so I graduated in June of 2019. Um, and I am now living in San Francisco and I'm working for an architecture firm here in the city. And um, yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. I can kind of like go into depth, but I want to give um, Gabby his, his, his moment. <laughs> Great, thank you. All right. Um, so yes, my name is Gabby. Uh, I graduated from Milken in 2009. So, uh, and I graduated from the U of O in 2013. So four years. Um, I majored in economics at Oregon. And now I actually work in construction. I'm a project manager. So I actually have some questions for Corinne. Uh, I don't know what kind of <laughs> architecture she does. Uh, <laughs> but I 100% agree with her about Oregon providing that like big campus feel, but also feeling small at the same time. And they do a really good job of that. Uh, one thing also just like physically, the campus is pretty small for a big school, which I didn't like come to realize like for me I really like that maybe not everyone likes that I really like that um so yeah and now I I work in building multifamily apartments in Los Angeles uh, I was born in Los Angeles raised in Los Angeles obviously went to Milken and after Oregon uh returned home and now I'm living here and I would say that you are not that old. Um, so <laughs> don't age me too. <laughs> I said like of the group, whatever. <laughs> the same generation, okay? Yeah. Um, all right, great. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I know, I don't know actually 
Abby and Sam, if you had lots of questions coming into this, I have a couple I want to ask first, but then by all means, the floor will be yours. Um, and certainly Corinne and, and Gabby, you can share all your wisdom. Um, I guess just first and foremost, um, you both have have careers now post um, being at Oregon. And I'm curious if you can speak to some of the real world experiences that led you on the path that you're on um, in terms of internships, career development, did Oregon set you up with your jobs after college? Like how did that support come into play? Sure, um, I, I can start Go for again. it, yeah, 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 go for it. Um, so, so I would say 100% yes. I would not um, have the job that I have <laughs> right now practicing architecture if it wasn't for the resources that the architecture school truly provided for its students. The school itself is, it's a very, the architecture school is a very small school. I think our graduating class was about a hundred people per, per year. And with that, it's great because you're able to like really, really build really close relationships with the, um, I, I'm blinking on the name, but like the job like student, student resources, but in particularly in the architecture field, I'm blanking on the name, but it was really set and designed for finding students uh, internships, working with students on their portfolios, on their resumes, um, on their cover letters, geared for architecture jobs. Um, and I use that, I mean, religiously, I was in that office like day in, day out. I'm like, here's my resume. Let's take a look at this. Here's my portfolio. Let's look at this. Um, and that really helped me get land um, an internship. I think I started interning um, every single summer after sophomore year. Um, and then with that, it helped me get a full-time job after I graduated, um, and which was great. And they also host a career fair once a year where they bring in a bunch of architecture firms from Seattle, from Portland, from LA, from San Francisco, from New York, and have booths scattered like all around the architecture building. And you're able to go and connect to alum, to people who've worked there, to principals, project managers. And I definitely took full advantage of that as well. Great, thanks. Uh, yeah, so to be honest, um, kind of what I majored in in Oregon has really nothing to do with my career. And actually I got started in my current career path because of someone I know at Milken. So it's actually kind of the inverse. Um, someone, one of my like best friends at Milken, his dad like owns a flooring company and I was talking to him and he asked me if I'd be interested in doing like not working for him, but like he knew someone that was hiring. Uh, and that's how kind of like I got started and you know, it kind of catapulted into what I do now. So. In that respect, professionally, I would say it's not, it wasn't as like clear as a path as like what Karen had or Corinne, excuse me, um, in that architecture. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do when I went to Oregon. Uh, but I will say like, I feel like I kind of grew up at Oregon. Like I kind of like matured into like who I am today there. And it's like, I mean, I think it, at any college experience, it's going to be this, but my college experience was at Oregon, so I'm going to speak very highly and proudly of it. Mm -hmm. I like became an adult there, you know, and like I really like learned how to be myself there, which obviously affects your career. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Um, in general, what was the best thing about your experience? If you had to like single it down to just like one favorite best thing, what would it be? I would say I made my lifelong friends. There are people that I call family mm -hmm. uh, at Oregon, you know, people that are going to be part of my wedding. Um, and there's like, I don't really know how to like describe it unless you are part of it, but there's like a special community of people there. And it's something that bonds people for a very long time. And it's very strong bonds. And uh so I would really say like the number one thing, the number one like, uh, yeah, thing, I guess is the word I'm, cause I'm blanking that I would took out of there is, you know, these lifelong friendships and relationships I now have that extend way beyond work. Mm -hmm. 
Oof. It's like so hard to just nail it down to one. I don't know. There's like, hmm. I, I, I guess I'll speak on like what, what Gabby has said, because that is very important. There is something, there is something about Oregon where it's like, we're in the city called Eugene. It's super college town. Um, and it's kind of like this city where you're just like, whoa, like, you know, we're from LA. So we're like, whoa, like this is so different than like where we're from. And there's so many people from big cities, like they come from Portland and San Francisco and LA and you're here and you're just like, whoa, like, where are we? Like, what is this? And then that like unites you. Like, you're just like, we're going to, we're going to live here like for four to five years together. And there's like something so special about that. where like, I feel like if you, I don't know, if you were to like stay closer to home, like you're so familiar with the area, like this is something so different. And like, it's the only opportunity that you can like real like college, it's like go try something completely crazy in you. Um, but like everyone else feels that way too. So it's like, it really like kind of like unites you and it's, it's pretty awesome. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like Eugene is like a quintessential college town. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like huge yeah, football. Yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And I totally get what you're saying, Gabby. I mean, not that Oregon isn't special and I'm not an alum, but I really think that it is about finding your people, right? Like lots of colleges have great academics, great professors, decent food, whatever, but it comes to you finding your people and knowing that it's a good match with that, where you're going to feel supported and challenged. And that's lovely that, that you both have had such positive experiences with that. Um, any uh, regrets that you have from your time at Oregon, um, a class you wish you never took, or uh, I don't know, any types of regrets overall? I would say the one regret, but like, I'm actually now making it a point to like do those things is that um, it, Oregon is just, it's a beautiful state, but it's massive. Like it's, and there's so much to see in terms of just like outdoors and there's like Crater Lake nearby and, and just all these gems like around the state. And I never had a car in college. So I was always like, oh, I want to go on this three hour adventure and go explore and this and that, but none of us had cars. And so my one regret is seriously like not renting a car or something over there and like going out for the weekend and just going out of the college town, out of Eugene and just seeing what else is, is out there. Okay, cool. Any regrets? Uh, yeah, I mean, I just read this book called The Midnight Library. So I'm like trying, and it's like all about not having regrets. So I'm trying not to like put that word <laughs> in my vocabulary. Uh, but yes, I didn't visit Cr Crater Lake and I am bummed about that. I will be there one day, but I agree with that. There's a lot of gems and, you know, I took road trips. Like I, it's not that I didn't take road trips, but I, took road trips at UC Davis to party because my brother went there. I went to like, Seattle. I went to Seattle a couple of times, obviously mm -hmm. Portland, uh, but that is true. Like the nature, a place like Crater Lake, a place like Bend, you know, you're up there, like you should go make a point to see these beautiful places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Sorry to project like <laughs> bad vibes of- No, 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 <laughs> just like very much in my head right now. Yeah. <laughs> get that it's a it's yeah. an oddly worded question <laughs> yeah <laughs> any advice that you would have for a student transitioning into Oregon other than like rent a car one of these days and go on a road trip um <laughs> any other mm -hmm. things that you would suggest in terms of making that transition especially coming from such a different place like LA mm -hmm. um I would say this I, um the weather affects some people I'm not gonna lie like it's coming from LA like I know many people like came to LA and it was a big adjustment and it's not because it rains it's just it's just different weather so my advice would really be like some people like can adapt immediately but just give it a year if you and I don't mean to sound like that but it's just like some people have trouble adjusting but it's such a special and spectacular place it took me a couple months to really get used to, you know, it's a big adjustment. You go from LA to Eugene, you go from California to Oregon, you go from sunny weather to 
gloomy weather, even though uh, springtime in Oregon is the most spectacular weather you'll ever experience, I promise you that. But you have to give it some time to adjust and like that is life. And so that's the only thing I would say is if you don't like it day one, week one, that doesn't mean you're not going to love it. It just means, you know, you're, you're kind of in a transitional phase. Okay. Yeah. Um, hmm. Advice. I would, I think, I think coming from Milken, which is, it's a small school, you know, you know, everyone in your grade and you know, all your teachers and you're saying hi to whoever while you're passing them by in the hallway and, and all those things. Um, Oregon is, it's a pretty big school. I, I forget, I think there's about like 20, like, how is it? It's like 20,000 undergrad. Undergrad, yeah. And then another like on top of that, like eight to 10,000 of grad students. So it's, it's a big school and, and you will not see those familiar faces like all the time. And I, that to me was kind of like a hard adjustment. I'm like, oh, well, like this is different. But, but the advice that I have to give to that is like, try and by saying that, like put yourself out there in as many different like things that you could be involved in so that those familiar faces kind of show up more often and it makes a bigger school feel smaller, if that makes sense. Like I was, um, I was in a sorority. And so like, I was, you know, seeing my like sorority friends like around campus and that made campus feel a little bit smaller for me. And, and then I was, you know, I was involved a little bit in Hillel and the Chabad over there. And so I was seeing those familiar faces around school and then the architecture program is small. So I had my architecture friends. So it just made the easement of being in this really big school. You're like, oh my God, I'm such a, with a, fish in a big pond or something like that like it made it just feel a lot homier which was which was really really nice um just because I think that if I had only if I was only like laser focused on just architecture and like the school of architecture and those people I think that I would have kind of felt a little bit lost but because I was involved in different aspects like different involvements that Oregon had to offer, it definitely made the school a lot better for me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Abby and Sammy, um, I'd love for you each to introduce yourself and like what year you are at Milken, what led you to come to this chat tonight. Thank you, first and foremost, for being here. I am <laughs> I'm a little disappointed that there's no one else, but more time for your questions to be answered, I guess. Um, Abby, do you wanna introduce yourself first and feel free to ask a question too. Sure. Um, I'm Abby. I'm a junior. Um, yeah. What else? Am I, that, I mean, I don't know what else. What led you to what originally uh, piqued your interest about Oregon? Oh, um, well, I, I guess, I'm sorry. I guess what first piqued my interest was that, um, I know some, I know someone who's like, uh, two years older than me so she's a freshman at Oregon now so that I think that's what first made me like look into it and then I guess it seems like really a nice school like you guys said like I like the idea of a college town and um, I think it's cool it's like I don't know I don't really want to stay that close to LA like I think I want to get out of California, but then it's also like, mm, Oregon's not that far from California. It's not like it's the East Coast. So that's like kind of um, nice to like have that type of school on there. And I don't know, it just seems like I, okay, this, I'll, this will lead into my question. I think the biggest, <laughs> the biggest thing that I'm like held up on um, when I think of Oregon is just like that it's, like you guys have kind of been talking about, like it is on the bigger end of schools. And like, I guess I, on like my college list, I've mostly been like looking for more mid-sized schools. Cause I'm just like, I think I'm just scared of like that idea of going from like a school, like what you're saying, Corinne, about just like knowing everyone you see, like, I'm just worried about that. Like walking through the campus and just like 
feeling like all like you don't know anyone and I don't know I'm struggling with that because I don't know if like that's something I should like let dictate my choices because I know like after a while you're gonna know more people and you're gonna like find groups that like make a bigger school smaller but I don't know this isn't really I don't know where the question was in there but <laughs> that's just... no it's it's a good point though it, it is a good point um and I think the one thing that I'll say about that is that I was when I was in your shoes um I I was I was like, I felt very limited in the schools that I could even apply to because I knew what I wanted to study. And so, and what I did study is not offered in that many schools. So for me, I almost was like big campus or small campus. Like I have to put myself out there and I have to actually see myself potentially going to school there because there weren't just, there's just not that many architecture schools to begin with like it's not like studying business or econ where that's that's in a lot of schools so you could then have that kind of you know like oh I'm only going to apply to big schools that have econ like I was very limited in the schools that I could even apply to to begin with so I and then on top of that adding the stress of like oh my god like what if like I do have to go to this big school because it has architecture but I don't know if I actually am gonna like it but I will say that like it was intimidating at first, definitely. Um, being a freshman and I like knew I had to be there for five years and I didn't even know who was an undergrad or who was a master's student at first. I was like, oh my God, this is scary. Um, but I, I don't know, there, there is, it does feel a lot smaller than like the numbers that you see on paper when you see like how many students are there or how big the campus is or the fact that it's a football school and a college town and a basketball school and all these like we're um, we're like really closely connected with Nike and so you hear like our name get thrown around a lot but like it doesn't feel that as big um, um yeah <laughs> yeah I absolutely agree with you it's I understand your concern about like a, a going to a big school and I was worried about that as well and um they really do, it's, it really feels like a small community, even though there are like some big school like vibes, I guess you could say, it really does feel like a small tight knit community. And you'll, you'll walk through campus. And of course, you're not going to recognize every face, but you'll see the same faces every day, you'll recognize people. And especially as your network grows, you're, you'll notice you'll start saying hello more, you'll start seeing people on your way to class. Um, so I, it's like, I understand the concern, but I really want to get that point across that like, Hey, yes, it's a big school, but the small town or small school uh, feeling is present. Yeah. I think also, I mean, I, I so appreciate you, Abby being so authentic and like yeah. um, vulnerable from the start and be like, this is what I'm freaking out about. Um, <laughs> because uh, it, that's how we can clear up confusion around this or just give some clarity because also there's such a range of large schools, right? Like Oregon has 18,000 or so students. I mean, I was just in the Wisconsin chat, which has like 40,000. To me, that's like mm -hmm. a city, um, you know? And then yeah. you know, some schools that even have 50,000. So large schools can really have such a range. And I mean, obviously Corinne and Gabby can speak more to the size of Oregon than I can from like a one or two hour visit that I had. But I will say one thing that I absolutely get that you guys are speaking to from my experience of just being on campus for an hour or two was like you said before, how accessible it was to walk around. Like we saw the whole campus in like an hour. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, yeah. we were getting on a bus to go see parts of campus. Mm -hmm. And also everyone was decked out in green and yellow. I don't know like if it was yeah. okay. <laughs> something about like, I mean, there was like, not a red t-shirt in sight. <laughs> about that much palpable school spirit made it feel a little bit more like smaller community vibe, just mm -hmm. possible in that sense where we're like, yeah, we're all in it together. Um, so yeah. that was just like my one hour take on campus, but hopefully um, that makes you feel a little bit more comfortable too, Abby, from hearing what they're saying about, you know, ideally not feeling so, so large. Yeah, I that, that does help a lot. And like, that sounds good because I'm like kind of torn in these two directions where like, I'm like, well, maybe I like, would kind of like to not know every single person I see like 
Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm just used to that and I just don't know. Like, because I'm like, yeah, maybe it is kind of annoying to like turn every corner and like have to say <laughs> hi to like 20 people. But but that, I think, I don't know, I'm just torn because I, I feel like at like a small, small school, I feel like I'd get like really, I'd feel bored and like kind of trapped in and just like, like, okay, I get it like already um, after a certain amount of time. So I think, I don't know, it might just be like, like I also like, I feel like you're right about like a range of big schools. Like this is like on the smaller end of big schools. So I feel like, uh -huh. like it's probably like you get used to it after a while and it, but it, there are still aspects of like, it is a bigger school and like you don't know. Yeah. Anymore. So an another point to just add on, like with this small school, big school, um, one thing, uh, maybe it's changed, but like one thing that in my experience is my first two years there, especially like, and I don't know how it was in architecture, but there were a lot more like lecture hall classes, bigger classrooms, especially like your general classes, you know, your 100 level, your 200 mm -hmm. levels. But once you kind of advance in your major, it goes from like, you know, a big classroom to a very small concentrated classroom where you become a lot closer with your teacher. The teachers are very open to office hours regardless of the size. But I felt like as I moved through my major and really started getting the upper 200 to the 400 levels, um, the classrooms almost felt like Milken's classrooms where it was like that mm -hmm. small and that much attention was paid to each student. So that's just another thing I'd like to throw in there, where, you know, with a how a small school looks like and a big school looks like. Mm -hmm. um, Sammy, do you want to introduce yourself? Any burning questions you had coming into this? Yeah, so I'm also a junior at Milken. Um, I don't know if you wanted me to say why I was kind of interested in Oregon. Yeah, that'd be good. But sure, yeah. So kind of what Corinne was saying was her regret is one of the reasons why I want to go to Oregon is because of all the great things that the state has to offer. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, you know, I, I love camping. Uh, I love hiking, skiing, climbing, and so a lot of outdoor sports. And I know Oregon would be a great place for that um, to go to college for that, uh, especially because I'm most likely also looking for a big school. Um, I know that's definitely Oregon. And kind of what you were saying about the classic, classic um, college town uh, that was also very appealing. So those are most of the main reasons why I'm, you know, interested in applying to Oregon. Great. Any questions you had coming into this or any that have come up since we've been chatting? I don't have any burning questions right now, no. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I am like get, getting a lot of information from what you guys are saying. Great. Right. Abby, did you have other questions? I wanna make sure that we get any questions you all have answered. I have others I can ask, but I wanna make sure you get them answered. Um, I don't have any at the top of my head right now, but I'll think of more. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> One thing I was thinking about, Corinne, you mentioned um, some of the ways to make a bigger school feel small or just kind of like mm -hmm. your people, right? Like um, Gabby said he has his, you know, best men already figured out for his wedding. Um, like, how did you meet people? <laughs> was, it, was it in the forms? Did you join clubs? Was it through Hillel, your major? Like, wh what were things that you were involved in or took advantage of? Um, yeah, it was in like all of those. <laughs> um, and, and it definitely took time for me to like join those, those things. I did not do it. Like first thing when I was there, I'm like, I'm going to do this and this and this and this and this and this. I definitely like, it feels like every single year I kind of grew on and added on another thing that like, I was like, oh, this is a great opportunity to make new friends and to meet people. And so, um, my freshman year, I did like the UO swim club because I grew up a swimmer and I was on the milk and swim team and I, and I love that. And then my second year I did, I was, I joined, a, I rushed a sorority. And so I, be, I, that opened the doors just for like a lot, meeting a lot of people, both within my major, without my major. And then my third year, I was like president of challah for hunger at Hillel and we baked challah and I did this big challah bake like once a semester and that was super fun and 
I was bringing my sorority friends and my architecture friends over to this. And it was like a clash of involvements, which was just really, really fun. And then it just seemed like every single year I was really, really eager to just do something more. Um, and, and that's just, I think like that just speaks to like who I am too, which was like great because I was able to like really just fully be myself, but also that speaks to like how much Oregon has to offer. Like everything that you can think of from like a ski team to a ceramics club to rock climbing to track and it, it, they just have everything and so like you'll never like think of something and be like oh I wish there was a club there for that because like they'll have it <laughs> um, and so that's like really really great I don't think that you can necessarily get that at, at a smaller you know liberal art school they I don't know if they have that particularly kind of like set in their system but like when you go to these bigger schools you get such a diverse amount of people that have all these interests and they accommodate for like everything. So it's really, really great. Out of the question. Um, I don't know if I've, if either of you are really like on like anything like the pre-med or science track, but I was just wondering if there's like, like if people like undergrads are able to get like um, involved in any of their professors research if that's like a, something that's common or if it's kind of difficult to like make connections with professors in big classes that kind of thing so I was not pre-med nor science but I do have some notes to add Oregon's like it's considered a research university they they tell you that a lot so uh, they actually do a ton of research for the state. So I, I do know there are opportunities there. I don't want to like BS you because I don't know too much about it in detail, but I know like that is something that they offer. And then the other thing is, and I think it's like this at most schools, to be honest. So, but like, I know it's for sure like this at Oregon. If you go and introduce yourself after class and tell teachers what you're interested in, they'll find a way to make it happen for you if you're willing to put in the work. Like I was interested in doing some like sports research and I found a teacher at the campus who let me do like a bunch of research for like soccer, you know? So like whatever you want, like there are resources and it partially it is because it's a big school, but also it's because teachers are there to teach and they want to help you and they want to see their students grow and develop and be successful. So I think as long as you're willing to put that foot forward, you know, they'll, they'll help you and at least point you in the right direction and provide you resources. So um, I would say yes. And then as far as like a research, I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that's also a yes, but I cannot tell you specifically for, for that major. Yeah, I can't, I can't speak specifically to that major as well. But I do have friends that did uh, pre-med or they did, um, they were in OCHEM classes and biology classes and all that. And I know that there's this huge research symposium that takes place once a year and they would work really, really hard for it. So I know that there's some like research involved there and they like go on and I think that they, there's like a competition out of it as well, like from the symposium and you can go and get your work published. And this is in the science and medical uh, fields. Um, I just don't know too much about it, but I have, I know that that is there. Great. Um, I actually do have a question. Uh, how the, like when you're applying, how it works when you're going into certain schools, I'm not sure how many different colleges or schools like Oregon has. Um, and is it easy to switch between them if you were to change your mind, like once you get there? Uh, it, it depends what, I guess, is there like a specific one you're looking into or a couple? Is that a question? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Is there, is there like a few specifically you have in mind? In I terms of like business school or journalism? Well, I'm, I'm most likely looking at computer science. I'm not sure which school that fall, uh, falls under. 
Okay. Yeah. I don't really know about computer science. The, the only thing I would say, obviously architecture is a very like specific one business, for instance. Um, I think you have to do like, like two years uh, of general classes and you have to maintain a certain GPA of like 3.0. Uh, I think journalism, unless the requirements had changed there, you could just start right away. But there was kind of, I think after, at the end of two years, there was like one of those like weed out classes, you know, where they like kind of mm -hmm. weed out the students um, if they don't think, you know, so it, it really depends on the school. Uh, for, for myself, like I ended up doing econ, there, there wasn't, you know, there was just, if you wanted to do it and you kept your GPA above water, you know, so it, it really just depends on the school. Yeah, I feel like my, my guess would be that computer science is probably in the College of Arts and Sciences where econ maybe is as well, where you kind of apply into your major and you're able to start off with it. Um, but you could check that out on the website sometime. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know about computer science as well. That might be in the... Uh, I can't, I, I don't know, I don't, yeah, I can't think off the top of my head, but definitely, I know, I'm pretty sure if you go on the Oregon website, you Oregon website, there's like a category that will say all the different schools that you apply to within, or within, within Oregon, and um, they'll probably give, speak to like the process of getting in, the requirements of applying to that school, if you need to take any gen eds while you're already there and then apply to the school. Um, architecture was different in its own. It was, it was actually really funny. I got, um, I got accepted to specifically the architecture school. Like I got a letter in the mail that got, I got accepted to the architecture school before I got like my letter that I got accepted to Oregon. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I, yeah, I guess I got it. <laughs> Because it was like so separate than like the regular admissions route. We had to submit a portfolio and um, uh, a couple other a couple other things. So they just do their own thing. So, <laughs> but I, I feel like other in other schools, it's it's through the admissions, kind of the same parallel route. Yeah, architecture. There's so much work that goes into that application, and it's mm -hmm. its own unique process. Um, yeah. Curious, yeah. <laughs> did you start off as econ? Like, did you know that econ was the thing you wanted to do, um, or did you switch around? Like, did you get any advising on that? No, I I started out. I wanted to do like sports business, and then I was there for a year, and I really wasn't as into it. So I actually really loved econ with Mr. Bloom. I don't know if he's still there. Yep. Um, he is? Yeah. Woo! <laughs> yeah, I love Mr. Bloom. Oh, Mr. Bloom. Oh, I had him, I had him over there. Uh, I had him for AP econ too, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I like love Mr. Bloom and he really taught me like my foundation of econ and I really enjoyed it. And through those classes, I actually like, was able to skip a few classes because they were AP. And he gave me a great foundation and I took a couple more econ classes and I really loved the major for most of it. There were a couple of classes I did not like, but um, so yeah, and I, I really came to like it, but it wasn't what my original plan to be honest. And because I was, when I went to college, I was not really sure what I wanted to do. So I knew econ was a good major to you know, it's transferable. You can go to business, you can go to finance. There's a lot of things you can do with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like um, your experience of being able to switch a major when it's not something like architecture where you're showing like this talent where it's like, I'm starting here, I'm going to be here for five years. It is mm -hmm. going to be a lot more flexible in, in other areas. Yeah. Obviously. I mean, it, it's funny the way you talk about the architecture school because like we always knew it was like kind of just like its own little world. It's <laughs> So yeah, so it's, it's an like island. It's own little world. An yeah. island. <laughs> and Oregon is so lovely for um, architecture. Whenever I have a student tell me they want to study architecture, I'm like, you're going to Oregon, please. <laughs> Go to Oregon. Yeah, it's it works. I've figured it out. Let's it. It's, it's beautiful. I mean, it's such a beautiful campus. And um, since I left in June of 2019, they are building away over there. Like, it's just like top of the line 
campus resources. It's it's beautiful over there. Yeah. Um, Abby, Sam, any other questions come up? No. <laughs> um, I was wondering, Abby, um, in terms of you, uh, you said like you obviously met like lifelong friends at Oregon. How did you meet them? Were there a bunch of things that you were involved in? Uh, so I joined a fraternity my freshman year, and of course, like I, it was the Jewish fraternity, and then. Oh, it's like it's weird it, it's funny how life works because you're in Oregon and you're meeting these people and like half of them are just like Jewish people from LA it turns out so uh but uh so that's how I met a lot of people there I also did Hillel um I was pretty active in my time at Hillel um I played a lot of intramural sports so I met people that way and also through my major honestly uh my major was also once I got to like the upper levels of my major, um, it becomes like a pretty tight knit group. Everyone kind of knows each other. You, you take the same classes. So that, that's how I met a majority of the people. Awesome. Anything? Oh yeah, Abby, go for it. So I have a question about like Greek life because you guys both said you were involved in it. Is it like, like I've heard like I've read some things about colleges that just say like if you're not involved in Greek like life you're like you're not gonna have a social life and that's like the main way you meet people like is that true like how does it really play a role is it like the classic things you see in the movies like <laughs> you know yeah <laughs> no it's it's a legit question I I definitely had my um, my a lot of questions about it um so I, I, I chose to rush a sorority only actually my sophomore year. And the reason why I did that was because I did want to see if I was able to, you know, kind of not be in one. I just realized it's so dark in my room and the lights aren't on. So I hope that's okay. But um, um, uh, where was I going with that? I, I did my first year without being in a sorority and I am still friends like truly like so friends just I just booked a flight to New York to go visit a friend from my like dorm um who I did not meet through my sorority and and it's just you don't need you don't need to be in a sorority to have friends it's not one of those schools that you kind of that kind of has that reputation at all um I would say actually a very small percent of students are in a sorority um the sorority houses are pretty small over there um, even though they do kind of, it feels like they take up a lot of room, um, but they, they, it, you, it definitely is not a big part of the campus at all or of, of the school. Yeah, I would 100% agree with that. It's, it's interesting. Cause like I, a majority of my social life was through Greek life, but at the same time, it's definitely not one of those schools where like if you're not in Greek life, you're not going to have a social life. Um, in fact, it, yes, like it's a small percentage. When you're in it, it doesn't necessarily feel that way, but it actually is like a small percentage. And the other thing is like, I don't want to say it's like looked down upon in Eugene, like being in, in Greek life, but it's not like, <laughs> it's not like your classic, like big school, like rah, 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 like I'm in a, you know, like I'm in a fraternity and like, this and that like that you see in the movies and you know that that like classic American like fraternity sorority uh, uh I don't know whatever the word is it's not that mm -hmm. you know it, it's honestly just like a great way to meet people and um it is a good I think it's like a good addition to your social life to be honest I would recommend it but that doesn't mean that if you don't do it, you're not going to have like a bad time. You're not going to meet people. You're not going to have a good social life. Uh, I don't think that's the case. The other thing is, I just want to say, Animal House was filmed in Eugene. So there's a it was? Gonna go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go turn on my light. Okay, sorry. <laughs> yeah, my room got so dark as well. But anyways. <laughs> um, and the office. <laughs> I appreciate hearing that, how the Greek life kind of works out at Oregon because it really can be so different right like it sounds like 
if you're not a part of it, you still can have a life. And if you are a part of it, it's not like going to take over your whole life. So you can find the right yeah. balance with it. Um, real quick as well. I know both of you have mentioned being a part of the Hillel. And I remember like hearing about matzo ball soup being delivered. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like Oregon's like just such lovely folks. Um, <laughs> anything that you can speak to regarding finding like your Jewish community and taking advantage of that at Oregon? Yeah, Jessica, when you came to visit, you had met Andy. Yeah. who he was the, um, yeah, he was the head of Hillel and he's great. He's, he's awesome. He is. Um, he is like, he will go so out of his way to literally like deliver you to your house, a bowl of matzo ball soup. If you're sick, like, it's amazing. It's so, so sweet. Um, so I was, I, I, Halal is a great resource for what, and I say resource, but it was like a home. Like you could, they had a completely open door policy, would host free Shabbat meals every single Friday, um, in addition to like barbecues and grills and dessert making. They had so much food like to give. Oh my God. It was like my mom, like she's just like, take all the food. But it was, it was really, really great to have that my first year for sure, because I was like, oh, I miss my family. Um, I miss that, that small school feeling, kind of what I was talking about earlier. And Halal definitely makes it feel so much better. Um, I would say that I was like, I would, I would go pretty often my first year. And then kind of as I was getting older, I was like, me and my friends that I made at Halal, we would go and like do our own Shabbat dinners, or we would go and just you know, like we didn't really need that Hillel foundation, but you get a lot of friends out of that for sure. Your first year, um, which was, which was great. So I, I also was very active in Hillel my first year. In fact, I went to Hillel twice a week, basically, uh, for Shabbat dinner and then something called fish, which, which stands for first year students at Hillel. I don't know if they still have that, but they basically just gave you a free meal every Tuesday. So, you know, I was there and, uh, and uh, Andy was not in charge of Hillel then it was someone else. And she was great also. Um, And she really helped uh, like introduce me and a bunch of people my age into Hillel. And at that time, my fraternity house was next door to Hillel. So it was like very easy to go in and out. And it was also right next to my dorm. I lived in Barnhart, by the way. Um, oh, and yeah. yeah. And, um, but then they, that woman left and they brought someone else in to run Hillel. And honestly, they didn't do too great of a job. But Andy actually came back my, came my senior year, it was his first year. And it really like, you come back as a senior and you kind of like want to give back and they really do a good job of like growing that Jewish community. And not only that, like Andy will come to LA every once in a while and they'll host like a beer night or, you know, whatever it is. So I think if you're looking for a Jewish community in Oregon, like you're set, you know, you don't have to worry about that. You'll be taken care of. Um, And if that's one of the things that worries you about, your college experience, I would say of in Oregon, you can put that in a, in a checkbox. You don't need to think about it. You'll yeah. be taken care of. Great. I agree. I agree. Um, all right. As we are kind of finishing things up, Abby, Sammy, thank you so much for being here. Any final questions before I hand it over to Corinne and Gabby for their final words of wisdom? How does uh, living at Oregon work? Do most people live in the dorms the first year? Or do some people get apartments? I would say 99.9% of the people live in the dorms. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much that. There, there are some dorms that are off campus. Like my dorm is off campus. But I know now there are, there are much more dorms. But everyone pretty much lives in a dorm. Yeah. After, after freshman year, are there like other options? Or do people still kind of stay on campus in dorms all four years? Oh, no, you then typically after that would, um, uh, I mean, it depends if you're, um, if you're in a house, if you're in a sorority or fraternity house, um, there is the option to live there your second year, um, you live and they provide you all the housing and, and everything, um, all the boarding stuff. Um, and then, 
but if you if you choose not to do that then you would go live um off campus and in, in an apartment yeah. most most people live off campus sophomore yeah. through senior year mm -hmm. yeah that's what that's what i did great Abby, any final questions yeah um, Corinne and Gabby, any final words of wisdom about choosing Oregon, like making that decision ultimately, um, just advice about the process of being there and, and being part of that community? <laughs> um, I would just say, and I mean, this goes to like all schools, but like, it's just like, try something that, just try something new, like try something completely different um you will not be alone in doing so even though it might feel like that you will not be alone in doing so and it's been like one of the best decisions I've, I've ever made um so just like real, like like if you're unsure about it if you're unsure about a school for sure if you're able to go and visit it and see it firsthand and, and really get that sense of it but after that like I would say just try something completely new and different like it it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, obviously, like, I will back Oregon forever and always. Like, I love Oregon. I love my time there. You know, there's many experiences that I have there that I'll never forget. Um, you, don't think, you know, it's college. Like, at the end of the day, like, you're going to school. You know, you're not, like, just moving away from home for four years to have a good time. Like, you are going to school. And I, t I tell that to my past self as well. Um, <laughs> but Oregon is a great school. It's a great place to make friends. It's a great place to experience life, uh, to experience nature. It really is a change of pace from Los Angeles. Um, and, you know, besides that, you know, I, it's your decision at the end of the day. Like, you guys are going to do what's best for you. Um, you. I would feel very comfortable saying, go to Oregon, but you know, if you go somewhere else, you'll have, you'll, you'll do great things there. So either way, best of luck. Um, I'm just going to shoot my email oh, awesome. in the chat. Um, if um, Abby or Sam have any questions that they would want to, um, to ask after the fact, um, you can always email me and I will oh. respond. Are, is everyone on that email chain? Um, no. The students are, but I can I can send both of them your emails as well. Okay. Um, All right. Perfect. Yeah. And we also I'm going to stop recording.